They can boast of being the youngest resident band in the world. Their band leader, Andy Pryor, has been called Britain's answer to Harry Connick Jr. and also dubbed as Frank Sinatra's natural successor by none other than Sinatra himself. So let's see what you think. Here are Andy Pryor and the Night Owls with The Nearness of You. It's not the pale moon that excites me That thrills and delights me Oh no It's just the nearness of you It isn't your sweet conversation That brings this sensation Oh no It's just the nearness of you So close to me, all of my wildest dreams come true. I need no soft lights to enchant me if you. To hold you ever so tight And to feel in the night The nearness of you you could have seen all their faces it was all Ooh. that it was all that oh it's a lovely <laughs> <laughs> could take him home to mum couldn't you <laughs> that was lovely Thank you. now you know this frank sinatra thing when, when did he say that to you i don't know I, I read about it in the papers yeah and uh the only connection i had with sinatra was a gentleman called me from the states and uh who played the recent album oh, a friend of his had played the recent album at last to Frank Sinatra in the States yeah. and the message came that Frank Sinatra said to tell Andy Pryor I think the punk's great <laughs> so I sent a message back saying tell him I'm not a punk so that, ah, that, that was about it really. What a nice thing to say though. No. Right? But uh, tell me about the band I mean tell me about your night owls because they're a the mixed bunch. Owls. Yeah the band was formed I formed this particular band three years ago yeah. I formed my first big band eight years ago 
when I was about three years old. Yeah. Something like that. And, uh, Bless him. Yes. We named the band the Night Owls, and uh, we became, uh, very quickly, we, we got the job at the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool as a resident big band. Um, when I say very quickly, it took five years in the planning on my behalf to get that job, to reinstate a big band in a situation where they'd only used five musicians prior to that. Um, but now we're at the Tower. In fact, we're, we're back at the Tower this year. Um, July the 17th, we start for another four mm -hmm. months, which makes us the only resident big band now in the world that is, of, of that kind, yeah. yeah, and a very young band as well, yeah, and a British band at that Yes, well. what's the age of, yes. <laughs> oh, you've got them now. Well, what's the age range? I don't want to embarrass anybody. The but... age range of the band, it starts at about uh, 16, <laughs> I don't mean mentally, I mean, you know, physically, yeah. Oh, yeah, it starts at 16. 16 yeah. <laughs> 12, <laughs> 16, and I'm the oldest. Yeah. And I, I've just had my 19th and a half birthday, <laughs> which is uh, something like that. I fear yeah. nothing. I say nothing at all. Tell me, what attracts youngsters, whippersnappers like you? Because that was a, a Hoagie Carmichael number. I don't remember him, so you sure as hell don't. No, I don't. What no. attracts you to that kind of music? I think that a lot of young people are getting a little bit tired now with the lyrics or the lack of lyrics uh, yeah. in, in some modern songs. And the great songwriters in those days did write some very nice lyrics, although some of them are rather profound. Um, but um, I think that's why mm. uh, we're going to that trend, because the lyrics are nice, especially on Valentine's Day, you know, mm. on that occasion. You know. But it's not um, nostalgia for you, is it? It's not nostalgia, because I was asked this um, on a radio show just recently, is it nostalgia? It can't possibly be nostalgia for us, because we don't remember it the first time round. The word nostalgia itself, you know, mm. is Mozart nostalgia? No. But if there was somebody around today who remembers it being played the first time, then, then to that person it's nostalgia, you know. Because you probably so. can't even do a Paso Doble, can you? I can't dance a step. So how can you sing like that with that music? And, I mean, that's I can't, why I'm I? a band leader, I can't yeah. dance. That's, that's why I'm on stage, basically, yeah. you know. But do, yeah. do, being a resident band at, at the Tower Ballroom, does, do you have to alter the material you do? Yeah, well, the, a lot of people in the audience obviously have bought the album. At last, uh, which it's good called plug, At that. Last. Isn't that a good, at at last, yeah. last. good yeah. plug, that isn't it? Yeah. At last, the album available on DG Records, and uh, uh, that sort of music is what I'd like to do with the concert, the concert mm. platform music. But at the Tower, we have a lot of fun because we're actually sort of changing the trend there as well and uh, getting away with getting away with murder, really, because <laughs> uh, uh, I don't get on too well with dancers. Um, <laughs> but apparently neither did Joe Loss, who was one of the, the Well, great... he did all right, didn't he? Yeah, he told them what they would dance to, and uh, unfortunately I'm not Joe Loss. I've got a few years to go before mm. I get the respect that Joe got. Um, but you have to tell people, look, this is the right tempo, and you're going to dance to this tempo, because if you don't, then go somewhere well, else. I, it's well, awful I'm sitting here, if anybody it. gets up and says, do you fancy it, I'm, you know, I'm game, <laughs> whatever. You're going to sing for us later, it's uh, yes. Harry Connick. Another, another track from our album, At Last. At last, the album. Go buy it for your record. Well, for the meantime, and, uh, <laughs> Andy Brown and the Night Owls. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sell the album. At last. <laughs> now, there have been some great on screen partnerships in the last few years. Much from Andy Pryor and the Night Owls. This is a Harry Connick number. <laughs> it's called Recipe for Love. <laughs> bit of me and a whole lot of you add a dash of starlight a dozen roses too then let it rise for a hundred years or two and that's a recipe for making love it doesn't need sugar it's already sweet doesn't need an oven it's got a lot of heat just add a dash of kisses to make it all complete and that's the recipe for making love and if you've made it right, you'll know it. It's not like anything you've made before. And if you made it wrong, you'll know it. Cause it won't keep you coming back for more. I didn't get it from my grandma's book up on the shelf. I didn't get it from a magical or culinary elf. No, a little birdie told me you can't make it by yourself. And that's the recipe for making love. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't need sugar cause it's already sweet It doesn't need an oven cause it's got a lot of heat Just add a dash of kisses to make it all complete And that's the recipe for making love And if you've made it right, you know it It's not like anything you've made before And if you made it wrong, you'll know it Cause it won't keep you coming back for more I didn't get it from my grandma's book up on the shelf I didn't get it from a magical or culinary elf No, a little birdie told me you can't make it by yourself And that's the recipe That's the recipe for making love to you That's the recipe for making love If you want a crack at that recipe, page 686, CFAX. Now my me next guest.